I'm serious about crosswords, and I think you should be too. Have you ever done a true New York Times style crossword? They're not easy. I'm not talking about the crosswords that your biology teacher gives you to teach you about the cell membrane. I'm talking about the big dogs. That's right, the New York Times style crossword. See, I have been doing the crossword for about a year now and have about a 50% success rate on the Monday crossword, which should be the easiest one. By Tuesday, I'm knocking down about 25% of them Wednesday, Thursday, Friday, Saturday, and especially Sunday, I'm screwed, okay? They are not easy. The New York Times crossword is specifically known for their dense block structure, alongside extremely niche and sometimes obscure trivia style questions for each one of their solutions. It requires obscure knowledge about art, history, language, labor unions, sports teams, different celebrities, weird movements in the 1700s about how the Protestant Reformation will affect Catholic tithe prices. Knowing the progress of large language models like ChatGPT, taking over and understanding parts of the world like speech and computer programming, I thought the natural next challenge, the next frontier for these large language models must be crossword puzzles. Or that's what I thought until I met my friend on a Wired interview David Kwong. Hi, David. Hey. If you want to talk about superheroes like Spider-Man and Batman, you should definitely be putting David Kwong on the list. He is one of the New York Times crossword makers. This video highlights the absolute artistry that goes into creating these crosswords on an everyday basis. A devotee of Dionysus, which I had to look up, and uh, we'll finish this out here with F major and Ta-ta for now. Pretty cool. The man is a man of his craft, and he has so much knowledge about the world around him that so many other people wouldn't have. He's like a trivia expert mixed with someone who has an eye for puzzles and structure. That is exactly the type of thing I would love to see an AI complete. So, what we're not going to be doing is training an AI to solve crosswords. We are gonna create our own crosswords with AI. I'm sure you guys have all seen crosswords before and done them in your past. They have a bunch of clues on the side, a bunch of empty spaces. You try to fill the empty spaces with answers to the clue. As you keep going, the structure gets more and more filled until bing, bam, boom, the puzzle is complete. So by the end of this video, we will have an AI that will create its own New York Times style crossword, and I'm sure you'll learn something along the way. However, if I take a grid and then fill it with random letters, give it random clues, I've created a crossword, but it's not a very good one. So to test if the crosswords are actually good, I'm gonna be trying to solve some of them. I wanna get into this as a junior crossword puzzle solver. I'm also gonna be grabbing a complete crossword noob, someone who's never played crosswords in their life and see if they can have their hand at it. And good news for you guys, if you wanna give a go on the crossword puzzles, you can actually go to my website right now. They're ready to go and you can play as many as you want. Just on nickvinden.com slash crossword and you'll be able to see them. So how can we actually be little robotic David Kwongs? So the first step, all deep learning scientists know that to train an algorithm, you're gonna need data. And luckily, by scouring the internet, I found the perfect data set. I have here a collection of every single New York Times style crossword just found on some guy's random website. Yeah, it includes over 26,000 puzzles, an absolutely mind boggling amount. And they go all the way back to the 1940s, amazingly. So this really is an extensive data set with a whole bunch that we can work with. So we have our data set. Now, what should we do? Now, one technique is literally just taking the raw data and training a model to produce similar outputs. You can kind of think of this approach as taking all the data and stuffing it into the model until you get something that works. 
My first idea was to create a GAN, a generative adversarial network. It's the same technology that goes into creating those AI art things and a whole bunch of other technologies in generative AI. And given enough time, I think this technique would probably work. There's a problem with it though. If we are just taking the raw data and try to produce similar outputs, we're asking the AI to do a whole bunch of work. First, it has to fill the board. It has to create believable and understandable real words across and down, filling up an entire board where each word has a meaning. It's not just a bunch of gibberish. And on top of that, you're training the GAN to create clues for each one of these solutions. Remember, before we train this AI, it has very little knowledge about the world around it. This can be an exceedingly difficult task, especially given low amount of resources that we have over here. I have one graphics card. It's an RTX 3080, which sounds like a lot, but the type of hardware that is used to train large language models is absolutely astounding. You're talking supercomputers and millions of dollars of electricity by itself. I think we're gonna have to take a different approach. So as a lot of good problem solvers do, we're gonna break up this problem into smaller and smaller pieces. And in fact, instead of training one AI, we're gonna train three that will work together as a team. These three sections are crossword filling, crossword validation, and clue generation. So how does this actually work? We're actually gonna start with the board generation and then move on to creating the clues next. To create our puzzle, we need to start by training an AI that can take partially complete words and fill them out. I took every single solution. That is the actual letters you put inside the board. See one across, that's a solution. One down, that's a solution. Remember, there's 1.7 million of these and they're all unique. And essentially, I would just randomly cover up letters with asterisks. Sometimes I'd cover up some of the letters. Sometimes I'd cover up all the letters. Sometimes only one. Training began when I took all the obfuscated, covered up words and put them into our neural network. The neural network would then do its best to fill out those asterisk word to create a prediction of what the neural network thought the word was originally. We would then compare the original word and the one generated by the AI. And if they were similar, we would reward the AI. If they were vastly different or incorrect, we would penalize them. As the AI did this more and more and more, it eventually got better at filling out half-formed words and creating legitimate predictions of what the words could originally have been. There's an online company called Hugging Face, and they have a really good user-intuitive way of training models like this. I can use their API, I can grab a pre-trained model, and then basically all I had to do was create the asterisk cover up, plug it into the model, and it would train for me. And it was so, so simple. We trained it for about a day, and by the end of it, the model is working actually really, really well. We have an auto-completer. How are we gonna actually use in the board? You basically just take an empty board and then randomly you select a solution. Inside that solution, there's a bunch of asterisks. You take that asterisk word and you plug it into the model. The model will create its best assumption on how to complete that word. It starts off with completely empty words, but as we continue this process over and over again, picking out random solutions from it, and filling those out, you can create a full puzzle. This was super easy to do. I had no real issues with it, but I only ran into one problem. And that problem was that the uh, crosswords were actually quite crap. Here's an example. Try to find what would be a good clue for the solution that is Natai. What about Siak? Or my personal favorite, NNNNN. Pretty obvious that there's a problem in this. Looking through the actual generation, I found a problem that the AI would constantly screw itself over in the future. When it was building the crossword, it did a pretty good job at filling out the exact solution it was tasked to fill out. The problem being that by doing this, it wouldn't account for all the cells it was affecting. And later down the line, when it needed to solve one down, it had absolutely no chance because it's already completely ruined this section of the board with a bunch of gobbity goop. So how do we solve this problem? Well, I think there are probably many solutions, 
but the one that I picked was something called crossword validation. I trained a second neural network. This one's job is to assess if a partially filled out word is or is not legitimate. Essentially, it takes a partially filled out word, just like the ones we were talking before, filled out with asterisks, and gives it a score from zero to one based on how usable it is. The only difference between training this one and the last one is with the data set. Going into the data set wasn't just New York Times solutions and partial cover-ups of New York Times solutions. It was also every single word from the English language taken from Webster's dictionary. But also inside the data set, we put together a bunch of randomly generated word. Fantastic words like XXX and just like before, we covered up these words with asterisks. We label each legitimate word, those are the ones from the dictionary and from the New York Times crossword solutions, and we gave it a score of one, and every illegitimate word with a score of zero. We then trained our model to output a score from zero to one, and we rewarded the model if it was close to the actual solution. As we kept on training it, it got better and better at doing this task until we had something that is useful. After training, we now have the ability to see if words are legit or absolute nonsense. However, we also made another change. I took the crossword generation model that we were using before and made a bunch of little customizations to it, basically hacked it around and got it. So instead of creating one legal word, it would create a whole slew of them. In fact, it was creating 256 words for each single solution it was given. And now, just like before, when we were looking for a word to fill out a certain section of the crossword, we would go to our generative T5 model and we would ask it for words. Instead of creating one, it would create 256. So now, instead of just taking one word, filling it in as the solution and then proceeding from there, we can now do a little bit of trial and error. Instead, we make 256 different variations of each board, and then we move on to the validation. The validation would go through every single word in the R potential crossword list and give it a score from zero to one. Once we average all these scores together, we will have an average score for each board. Once we take all of those board scores together, we will have a good ranking on which board is the most suitable. So you can see for this example, a word like national is very useful. It would create high scores for all of the solutions that were intersecting the word national because they were useful to use. They were legitimate, real places that you could put the solutions. Contrast this to a word like Zephyr. It's a legitimate word, but it has a lot of bulky, gross letters in it, like Z, P at the end, and that has a lower score than a lot of its competitors. So now we have way more options when selecting a word, and we have a way to choose what is the better word of all the words in the list. But our data validation AI doesn't actually just stop there. It gives us even more benefits. Remember what I said we would randomly select which solution to fill out first? Well, that actually isn't the optimal solution. We can use our data validation to look at each of the words in the crossword board and pick the one that has the lowest score. By doing this and filling that one out first, we can kind of hammer down all the problem spots before they grow and become nasty cysts in our crossword. We don't even have to look at the top score. We can look at the top five worst scores and fill those out. And why not create 256 words for each one of those? Now we have a much larger sample size from different angles of the board. We can assess through all those things and we have much more of a possibility. The only problem is that creating crossword used to take a minute and now it takes something closer to 15. Oof. It's the sacrifice we must be able to make. And there's massive gains here. We can see immediate progress when it comes to creating our crossword puzzle. The last technique had words like or, and and a ta ta and a tanny and going at and yarton just strange weird words. Although not perfect, the new technique has a lot more structure in the boards. We see a lot of basic words, stuff like sun, ad, saw, things that have been used in past crosswords hundreds of times and is not new to anyone around. But it also creates fun, interesting, novel words that have never been used in crosswords before, and I think are quite interesting. Look at this word. 
net toes. How about Octoman or Redline? You sure you've seen words like shint, maybe even sty? How about this one, buoy art? And stuff like STRT. You might say STRT is not really a legitimate word. I can already see the clue for this question. Abbreviation for street, STRT. A lot of them are maybe not the most common words that you've ever heard in your life, but they're fun, interesting, and they're pretty legitimate. We do have some strange solutions. No one's going to blame you for not knowing of words like Terha, Desa, or Arania. These are all words that structurally make sense. I can read them off the page. They're not XXX, YXXXY, but they're also not meaningful words that have legitimate reasoning in the English language. Also, you know how ChatGPT sometimes like to make up stories? Well, this one kind of does something similar. I don't know who Dr. Learget is, but I wouldn't trust him to do any surgery on me. So in conclusion, when generating the board, it seems like we get a little bit of a mixed bag on the actual word quality that our AI chooses to use. I would say about 50% of the words are legitimate. They completely make sense and you could probably solve them as a human if it came to you in a real crossword puzzle. I would say about 30% of them uh, have some semblance of meaning to them. Maybe they're just not quite right. Maybe they contain segments of some legitimate words, but put together, they're not completely dead on true. And then I would say the last 20% is complete nonsense. So it'll be interesting to see if our puzzle solvers can overcome these hurdles in order to solve our crosswords. I love that it's not just going with the low hanging fruit. It's actually filling out the crossword with pretty interesting solutions. It seems to me that this AI is actually capable of being quite creative. We see completely new solutions that have never been used in any New York Times crossword before. And I think it gives real personality to these crosswords. They're not robotic, they're not fake, they're not easygoing. They are difficult, challenging, and can guarantee that new players will be solving something that they've never solved before. And in a world where creating crosswords is a long and laborious process, it's quite reassuring and quite interesting to find that we can actually create something with a little bit of creativity behind it. I don't know about you, but I'm extremely happy with the solution we've done. I left this algorithm on for a couple of days and it was just generating crossword after crossword after crossword. I can hear you guys screaming at your monitor. What is a crossword without its clues? Nothing. So I think it's time for us to roll up our sleeves and find a way for us to create our own clues for each one of our puzzle entries. I came up with three strategies, two very similar and the other one's a little different. The first two solutions are blindingly simple. Essentially, I just asked ChatGPT to give me crossword clues. I don't know if you guys used the API before, but it's actually pretty simple. I gotta say, I was very impressed with what it did. I use ChatGPT4, which is their most innovative, new, largest model, and then also ChatGPT 3.5, which is probably what you're used to when you use ChatGPT. And look at what the solutions it created. I thought they're so interesting and creative. Look at this word, so os. You probably don't know what that means, and frankly, neither do I. But ChatGPT gave us a very poignant and I think fun solution to this question. Something you might say to your friend down under eating shrimp off the Barbie. So someone down under eating shrimp off the Barbie would be so Australian. So that's your solution. It's so awesome. It has a bunch of very simple solutions when the words are very easy. For the word starch, it came up with stiffening substance used in laundry. Remember some of those words that are plausible but not really words? It came up with pretty interesting solutions for those. What is a trep sale? No clue. ChatGPT thinks it's a yard event for discounted merchandise. And look at this other weird word, buke. When have you ever used the word buke in your vocabulary? My guess, never. But according to this crossword, it is now an old English variant for the word book. And yes, I looked this up, it is true. Blowing my mind even more, this is my favorite solution for all of the crosswords we generated. What is a R site? I have no idea. But apparently, according to ChatGPT, our site is a person who firmly stands behind RSA encryption. I guess if you're really passionate about triple DES encryption, you would be a triple DESite. 
But if you're into RSA encryption, you're an RSAite. Try solving that one. That being said, some of the words going into the model were completely nonsensical. I think even humans can't really come up with solutions to some of these crosswords. What would you put as your solution to the word late deck with two Ks? Um, I don't know. Moving away from GPT-4 and into 3.5, we saw similar results, although maybe a little bit rougher around the edges and definitely with more personality. Now I said that there was three different solutions I used, and the last one was a little bit more homegrown. Instead of just asking ChatGPT and their supercomputer to fill out my crossword clues for me, I wanted to do it at home. I wanted to see if a real human, you know, the ones with flesh, can train an AI to create good solutions, or if it's only reserved for faceless multinational corporations with supercomputers and millions of dollars of electricity bills. I once again used the Hugging Face API to pull a Google T5 model. And we came with the solution very fast. The T5 model was significantly worse than anything else before. Look at this. The word Dan, D-A-N, the solution is blank saber. Makes no sense. Now for CES, we got the solution CES, CES. Completely nonsensical. For word those, a very commonly used word, something that should be very familiar to a T5 model, it created the solution those who do not do drugs. What? I think that's a pretty sad, somber discovery. It really highlights how out of reach training usable large language models is for hobbyists or even for most universities. As these models get bigger and bigger and bigger, the most usable, useful LLMs are getting consolidated in larger and larger companies. Do you want to live in a world where the only companies who can train usable, massive LLMs are companies like OpenAI, backed by Microsoft, companies like Google, like Facebook? Companies like Tencent, it's not the point of this video, but as AI gets more and more integrated into our society, is this really the direction we want to go? Just some food for thought. But anyways, back to the video. We have our crosswords. They're ready to go. I've been running this algorithm to generate crosswords for about three days now, and it's just creating piles and piles and piles of them. And I've gone through, I've looked at some of my favorites, and I quickly whipped up a little JavaScript code that'll display this and put it on a website so we can play them all we want. Now, I think it's definitely time to test these out. The first test dummy is gonna be me. And I pinky promise with all my heart that I have not looked at these before we go. And here we go, I am off. Going into it, I had a feeling I would solve maybe some of it. I thought it was pretty unlikely I was gonna get all of it. I'm not that great at crosswords, but I was actually pleasantly surprised about what I did. I think I was able to solve some pretty tough challenges. Okay, MT, I got MT, hidden hacker from Quebec. So MTL, so Montreal, hidden hacker from Quebec, Montreal. That's pretty cool. Because I knew how these boards were generated, I had an idea of a little bit of how the logic works and how some of the words play out. Um, I did find some repeated words. You see words like Google quite a bit. You see words like were, W-E-R-E. -E. You see that all the time in these crossword generations. But in general, I got some pretty good ones. There were definitely some solutions I there was no chance of me getting. Like for Mediterranean archipelago country's capital without its last letter, I thought I was so clever by putting Athens, the singular form of Athens. Turns out the answer was really Palamo, which is complete doohickory. And I got absolutely robbed, by the way. Some highlights from the game definitely go to counting diesel fuel for a long journey being MPG ride, miles per gallon ride. Hidden Hacker from Quebec, Montreal Anon, I think that's just so cool. And come on, look how beautiful this one is. To gradually decline in quality or performance in a controlled manner, we got Smooth Degrade. But I gotta say, doing the puzzle, I felt like it was creative, fun, challenging, and I think it did everything a crossword needs to do. But don't just take it from me. Every good scientist knows that you need a sample size larger than one. So I've done us the benefit of boosting it up to two. 
please welcome to the stage our newbie crossword solver. Um, my name's Sarah, and I have little to no crossword experience. <laughs> and even though she's a self-described noob, she says she doesn't do crosswords that much, she's actually tearing it up pretty good. She's figured out some pretty difficult questions. This is the crossword clue with Dr. Learget in it. She doesn't solve that, spoiler alert. But she gets some good ones. Smart, cider, she figures that one out. I know she was frustrated. Uh, one of the solutions was a uh, curded milk product, I believe, and it's supposed to be cheese. For some reason, they got cheese. But overall, she did very well. I think she's happy with it. How did you feel about the crossword? Not too bad, like I got quite a bit done. Like I got more than I usually do. So if you did I that- I think the clues are good. If you did that, do you think you could tell if it was AI generated or no? Right? But I mean, I'm not. I don't do crosswords that often, but I wouldn't. I wouldn't know. So would you rate your? How would you rate your satisfaction on a scale of one to ten? Like a, like an eight and a nine. Anyways, if you want to test these out, they're on my website. The link is in the description. Feel a little uncomfortable doing this, but remember, please, if you can, like this video. It'd be very useful. I'm a brand new creator, and I'm just looking to have fun with you guys. And if you can, remember to subscribe. It costs nothing. I'm not asking for anything else. Okay. Thank you a ton, and have a great day.